Welcome back again, everybody, to another edition of Toss Podcast. This time we're doing something a little different here. We got me and Snyder both with a little visual action, so you can see what our pretty faces look like. Um, and Moving up in the big world. There we go. We're talking about uh, the NFL. Can't be more excited about it. Um, first week, here we go. What do you think, hey, man? Hey, don't, you th- don't let Draz lie to you. That treadmill's just for props. He ain't really using it. Hey, I ran on it uh, a few days ago. That's what <laughs> so... Anyway, yeah. so what? How, so how are you feeling, man? Feeling good, man. Up? Getting ready for week one of the NFL season, as usual. Um, kind of on a lull on the soccer side, which is kind of lame, but that's all right. Um, yeah, we'll then get ready. Just excited for that. We had a good college game action here already, so uh, you know it'll definitely get better as the season goes on, as college football always does. Yeah. So, now it's time for the NFL. So hopefully uh, the NFL season will get a little bit better too since uh, we had sort of a defensive dud on Thursday with a 10-3 to victory of the Packers over the Bears. Um, team, so man. Good defense, good defense, but also week one, maybe the offense is a little rusty. So maybe we got a little playing card here for that coming down uh, on some of these teams. Uh, for week one, they might come out with some rust, uh, but we'll start, we'll start it off. So we're going to make some picks, a little preview. Yeah, man, we got Detroit at Arizona. This is going to be an interesting one. You know, what? how do you feel about uh, uh, what's his name coming back in his first, second year in Detroit? My uh, Patricia coming back for a second year in Detroit. So that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, going against a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach, a guy that a lot of people don't understand why he's coaching in the NFL. You know, it's if it wasn't for him, I mean, we'd probably talk about Cincinnati's coach a little bit more. But <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury kind of stole the show from him there. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So we, it, it's a this one's gonna be an interesting game. I think it's one of the tougher ones to predict on the schedule because you really just don't know what you're gonna get out of either one of these teams this year. Um, personally, though, I'm gonna go with the defense. Uh, I, I'm I think Matt Patricia is gonna get a little bit better over there in Detroit. He's gonna have that defense a little bit more prepared. Um, I just don't know what I'm gonna get out of Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury, so I'm I'm just not gonna pick them. So. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I like the Detroit Lions, what they're doing. They have a really good team, uh, really good defense. And then you bring in a guy who's a veteran coach of defense and the pros. He knows what he's doing. So when it comes down to it, you got veteran defensive coach, even though new f- head coach. And then you get uh, Cliff Kingsbury, new offensive-minded guy coming into the NFL with his first-round pick. seems like they would just have to struggle in this one. I'd have to go with Detroit. I'm with you. So the next one on the docket here, we got the Rams at Carolina. Every time these two teams play, it's a defensive battle, if you could ever imagine. Um, it's always low scoring and, and, and uh, pretty good uh, just defense all around. So Wade Phillips versus, uh, you know, on the defensive side, you got Sean McVay with the Rams coming back for another edition of his offense. So um, uh, as far as this one goes, I think I'm going to have to lean towards the Carolina Panthers because – Right now, I think week one, you got to put a little more emphasis on the home teams. And I think the home crowds and everybody being pumped up, so I'm going to go that way. I'm with you. Uh, I think this one's a home field advantage. Um, I think it's a little easier for West Coast teams to come east, but um, I believe this is actually an earlier game. It's a 1 o'clock game. Um, so I don't, I don't tend to like West Coast teams playing 1 o'clock games on the East Coast, um, especially against a Carolina team that should be better. Uh, Cam Newton's supposed to be back healthy again. Uh, you could definitely tell last year Sunday was off with his shoulder. I mean, he's never been the most accurate intermediate passer, but he wasn't as bad as he looked last year either. Yeah. So, you know, getting yeah. him back with Christian McCaffrey again, another year under his belt. I mean, there's another Swiss Army knife. Um, I think people are kind of sleeping. They've gone after a couple receivers the last few years and tried to bolster up some youth into their receiving core. So, you know, you might be surprised by some maybe uh, some guys like um, uh, Debo Samuel or um, uh, Curtis. Uh, gosh, I'm blanking on his last name, but I, I want to say Samuel too. But uh, either way, I think they're they're putting out some weapons out there. Greg Olson, you know, can he remain healthy? I think that's going to be a big key piece for them um, mm-hmm. this year. But on the flip side there, you know, the Rams, I, I just don't know what we're going to get off that defense. I love Aaron Donald. Everybody loves Aaron Donald. Um, but, from, um, but from there on back, you know, they're they're – Still kind of some players that, you know, you're still wondering, like a Corey Littleton, for example. Um, I took him in a fantasy IDP league because he did so well last year. He's kind of a Swiss Army knife of guys. But, you know, how much can these guys really play as, as teams get more tape and they find out what they're weak at and they really <laughs> try to exploit them? So I think the Rams defense is an interesting case this year of how good are they really now that you don't have Sue and Donald 
really creating havoc up the middle of that line yeah. all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be an interesting follow. So I'm with you. I'm going to go with uh, Carolina on that one. Yeah. And then we, we saw – we talked about it just a second ago. But we got Green Bay. They came in to uh, – what in Soldier Field and did some work on there on, on defense. That's the team they won, but we don't have to get a pick. But just what are your thoughts? Did you see that one? Um, um, honestly, I I had totally somehow overlooked that Mike Patine was hired over there. Uh, you know, I liked him when he was in the Browns. I really thought he got shafted as a Browns coach. Um, I thought he had actually done pretty well given all the situation he was put in and what he was handed. Um, so getting him out in Green Bay, I think is interesting. Matt LaFleur did really well in Atlanta. He's a good quarterback's coach. Um, seeing uh, Aaron Rodgers excited about his defense again is kind of exciting. But that offensive line, man, I, I, I still don't know where they're at there. Yeah. And that could be key because, uh, as we know, Aaron Rodgers' collarbone seems to be made of glass. And, and Mitch Trubisky is, is still not looking like, you know, a, a real stud of a quarterback like you want in number two overall. You yeah, I see some flashes, but it, I don't know. I just don't know if it's there for them. Um, but we'll and, see. And, and they also have offensive line issues from what it seemed like, too. It didn't look like they had the best offensive line either. So, you'll see how that goes. It might play into the Vikings, who we'll talk about at the very end of this because they play our team, the Falcons. And so, we'll get to that. Um, next, next one up, though, we have – Tennessee at Cleveland. You're from Ohio. You're a Cleveland Brown person, so why don't you just start us off? No, of course I'm going to pick the Browns in this one. Um, Tennessee, you just don't know what you're going to get out of those guys. Mariota has always been a question mark. Um, he, he could play well sometimes, and he could play off absolutely terrible sometimes. So I, I just don't trust it there. I really like what Baker Mayfield brings. I think he's a genuine. I don't think he's kind of trying to put on a show to just pretend to be who he is. Um, I, I really genuinely think he's that, you know, kind of guy that can play with uh, Jarvis Landry and an OBJ. Um, he's not afraid to share the spotlight and have fun with those guys coming from an Oklahoma club and used to being surrounded by other highly talented guys that get spotlight as well. Um, and then I think I, I said often, I think their balance to them is their defense. Um, they, they've got a quiet guy, Miles Garrett, who just leads by example. He's not really a very in your face kind of guy, but you know he's there all the time. Um, so, you know, his play kind of does all the talking. So, I think it gives a good balance to this team. You have a swagger on offense and a defense that just quietly goes out and does work every single week. Mm -hmm. um, combination of those two things, I, I think, is just too much for a team like Tennessee to handle. Um, you know, I just I, – they're always that 8-8 eight and eight team. Like, they are the epitome of what it means to have parity in the NFL is the Tennessee Titans recently. Yeah. And, you know what I – Looks like we're going to agree again. Uh, I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns, too. I just like what they have on offense. I will say this, Tennessee Titans, their their best thing that they have going for them this year that I don't think anyone's really talking about is their defense. They should have a really good defense this year. But it is, like you said, to your point, it, it's all about the offense, Mariota, how consistent he's, is he going to be, how consistent is Derrick Henry going to be. We know that he hurt his foot in preseason, and is he fully healthy? Was that just overblown? Is you know, so there's a little bit of question marks there. You got to think with all the momentum that Cleveland has built over the off season, this they have to start the season off with a win at home. I would agree. So next up, we got that. You know, this is a good in division matchup. Uh, you got that. You know, Dallas with the Giants coming into town. Um, neither one of these teams tend to like each other very much. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the games where I'm going to kind of go against the consensus here. Um, I'm actually going to go with the Giants in this one. Um, Interesting. I think the Giants defense is a little bit better than people think it is. Um, and I think with Saquon Barkley in another year, uh, I, I, I like a lot of what they've done there. Um, uh, I, I, don't, I just – I think their offensive line and defensive line is a little better than people think it is, even though obviously Dallas I think has the overall better offensive line. Um, but I think, you know, what happens with Zeke coming back, he's going to get his 20, 25 touches. Running backs are normally better, but – you know, there's just so much that's gone on in Dallas. How much distraction has it had to kind of start? We'll see. So I'm gonna go with the Giants. And that, and that, your last point is really something that's very interesting about the Dallas Cowboys. They had, had a lot of uh, distractions in the offseason, really specifically with their quarterback and running back. You know, Dak still doesn't have a new contract. He turned down. There was a contract disputes and stuff, but he said, you know, he's still playing. He's not worried about it. Um, and Zeke, you know why he's not worried about it? Yeah, because he's making a bunch of money from endorsements and all that stuff outside of it. But it's like, you know, it's – And it's secure. 
and it's security. insurance against it. So, and, and I don't know why more people don't. Maybe there's like things about it, but and either way, I think ultimately when it comes down to it, I think Dallas's defense is actually really good. Uh, you saw it improve a lot last year. They keep bring back a lot of the same guys. Demarcus Lawrence, though, is going to hurt if uh, he's not fully healthy or ready to go. Because I'm pretty sure he has surgery or he's going to get surgery. Or there's something going on there with him um, and his availability. Um, so I'm 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 going with Dallas though at home, even though that's not really been their calling card. They're usually better on the road, <laughs> but I'm going to go at home. I'll go with Dallas. There you go. Now this is one of the more interesting matchups. I think you got Kansas City going to Jacksonville. Um, a Jacksonville defense looking to improve off of last year. Kansas City offense that's hoping that Nick Foles can uh, bring something that uh, Blake Bortles was never able to, um, which is some consistency at the quarterback position. Um, though I do find it kind of interesting that Alan Hearns isn't on the team right now, but Blake Bortles made him pretty good there for a minute. It's just an interesting yeah. bit about Blake Bortles. But. That, was, that was an interesting thing. <laughs> um, on this one, I'm going to go with the away team. I'm going to take Kansas City on the road. Um, I just think that Andy Reid's offense has always come out prepared. He always has new wrinkles that he's going to run. Um, and while I think it'll be a hard-fought game, I think it'll be close, but Kansas City's going to come out on that one. Yeah, I can see Kansas City. Everyone is Patrick Mahomes, MVP. And everyone's thinking he's going to light up the scoreboard, 30, 40 points. But I think Jacksonville's defense will be a lot better this year. Their offense should be a lot better with Leonard Fournette if he can just stay healthy. I know he missed a lot of games last year, and they were, you know, at times bringing in third, four-string running backs to run the offense. And that just – with a bad offensive line, it wasn't really going to work out that way. So – and then Bortles, of course. So it's a little change there with Jacksonville. But I think, like you said, it'll be a lot closer, maybe a lot lower scoring than people would imagine. Uh, so I'm going to go Kansas City too, though. All right, and then this um, next matchup, we actually have uh, Indianapolis going against um, uh, the Chargers. Uh, yeah, the Chargers this year. Um, and with that, uh, that's a tough game. Um, you know, you've got the Chargers who are also dealing with their own situation at running back. Um, they, they've got some other question marks around their offensive line. Uh and, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get completely out of the Chargers sometimes. They are at home, so you have Indianapolis traveling. Um, I think Jacoby Brissett's a little better than people think he is. He's not just a, a scrub. Um, he may not be Andrew Luck, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad quarterback either. Um, I think T.Y. Hilton might play well. Uh, I think he's finally coming back healthy. Uh, so that that could be an interesting development. They've had plenty of time to work together with Andrew Luck missing so much time. There's some chemistry now built between these guys. Eric Ebron's out there. He's another talented guy. But ultimately, I, I just I can't pick Indy uh, in L.A. I've got to go with the Chargers simply because, it, you know, East Coast teams just don't travel well. It's going to be a hard uphill battle. I think it'll be close, but I think ultimately the Chargers are going to be able to hang on at home. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I go with the Chargers, too. I think uh, for every reason that you said. And then, you know, I just think uh, there's a lot of hype around the Chargers uh, this, this year and last year, um, trying to repeat what they did. Got to go with the Chargers. Yeah. My... <laughs> All right, the next one, though, Baltimore at Miami. Should be a good, interesting one. A lot of battle of defense, but Miami has just depleted, like, their whole team of stars, basically. So maybe they have a bunch of unknown guys we don't know about. This one's not close. I, mean, <laughs> I think Baltimore wins by 10 points. Yeah, I, I'm with you. It's not close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just go ahead and call that one to be Baltimore. I like their defense. Lamar Jackson should have a good game, and we'll just keep on rolling. <laughs> New England at, is going to have Pitt come to town. So this is one of the more interesting matchups here. Um, New England's got some uh, question marks going into week one at who's going to catch balls. They've lost a lot of targets recently. Um, and then at the same time, you've got Pittsburgh coming in, who obviously got rid of Antonio Brown. And, you know, there's some question marks on who's going to catch the ball on their side. So this one looks like it's lined up for a good uh, defensive battle. But I think one of the more undersold storylines this year is the death of the Pittsburgh wide receiver coach. Yeah. I think that has an impact on a team. Um, sometimes, you know, things happen that make teams play for something bigger than themselves. Um, and I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see week one be one of those situations where it's the first time Pittsburgh can really go out there and kind of uh, 
try and, and, and play in honor of um, and do something in honor of their coach um, yeah. that, you know, a lot of those guys really had a lot of respect for. So uh, New England is known to stumble out the gate. They're known to be a slow to start. So oh, yeah. I think I'm going to go with Pittsburgh on this one to uh, pull it off in New England, um, even though, you know, the, at the end of the year, we may be talking about a completely different story. I'm just going to say this tidbit. That was three years ago. I joined a, a uh, suicide pool, you know, where you, you pick a team to win every year, every week. And yep. once you lose, you're out. And week one, I picked New England Patriots against – to win over the Arizona Cardinals, or it was week one or week two, and they lost that game. And the Cardinals only won like four games that season. So I'm going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers because I don't trust New England at home, and it's just a thing that it's a complex I have. So, well, they like I said, they tend to, they tend to, it's not uncommon for them to start slow and finish strong. <laughs> just a complex. Houston is going to go to New Orleans. Um, this one's another interesting one. You know, they just made a, a trade um, for a new offensive lineman. So, they're, you know, how long does it take to get some chemistry across that line? Sometimes it's quick. It's instant, you know. Sometimes the tackle's able to pick up very quickly and he can come in and, and just do his job. Other times it takes a few weeks. Mm. Uh, new Orleans, on the flip side, you know, they're also replacing a center. They did go out and draft um, the best center in the draft last year. Um, but, you know, you don't know what you're going to get out of a rookie at the center position. So, yeah. he's getting younger. Um, he can't throw the ball as far as he used to. Uh, he's still as deadly accurate as he always has been, but doesn't mean he can get it, you know, more than 45 yards, 50 yards downfield anymore. Yeah. So, with that, I think that kind of gives the Houston defense a bit of an advantage because that, that to gives their safeties – they know they don't – they only have to play so deep. It's not like you're going against uh, an Aaron Rodgers or a Mahomes who can really give you 60, 70 yards deep, you know, and you got to worry about guys getting that, you know, behind the defense on you. So, with that, I'm going to I'm gonna go against the, the Aints because I hate them and I can't pick them anyway. So, go <laughs> I hate the, the Aints, but um, I think – uh, with them losing, with the Texans losing Jadavian Clowney, with the them bringing in a brand new offensive lineman, I think that's something that'll they'll have to make some adjustments. Maybe the defense won't be as good. I'm just gonna go with New Orleans because even they if lost Lamar Miller too, and they're lo they lost Lamar Miller, so I'm like you know the more complete team is New Orleans. They're at home, and at the very least, uh, ever since last year. The very first game, the refs are going to help them out, so I'm going to give them New Orleans. <laughs> the next one we got, Buffalo with the Jets. Uh, oh, man. Talk you know, unless, unless you're a fan of these teams, you're probably not going to turn in, tune into these games and watch the Buffalo play the Jets. But I'm going to tell you, these two teams are teams to look out for in the next two years. I think talk they'll be really good. Talk about picking a crap donut and a turd sandwich. <laughs> well, if I'm going to have to pick that, <laughs> I'm just going to leave. <laughs> Get my money back. <laughs> but I'll take – I will take the Jets because uh, they got Le'Veon Bell. They have a lot – pretty good wide receivers. Sam Darnold year two should be, look a lot better. Same with Josh Allen on the other side of that. Um but I like the Jets. I like their defense. They have a lot riding on this. This is at home. They need to start off on the right way. Yeah, I'm not going to go on any rant on this one. I'm just going to go with the Jets. Um, I think they're just a little bit more uh, consistent year over year. Um, that tends to play a little bit better. Um, maybe Adam Gase is, you know, really hallucinating well today, and he's able to call a couple plays because he sees it in his visions. <laughs> and then we'll be good to go. There you go. Denver's going to go to Oakland. So, this one's an interesting one. Though, I'll be honest with you, I had Denver from the get-go long yeah. before Antonio Brown left Oakland. I'm going to stick with Denver to now. Um, you know, the Oakland situation just didn't get any better there, and that's a big distraction two days before your game. Um, so, yeah. So, I do love it for Darren Waller, who's on my fantasy team, because he should get some targets now. Oh, well, there you go. Go Georgia Tech. Go Georgia Tech. And also, Denver, one of, one of my favorite tandems in the league this year for uh, on the defensive side of the ball is going to be Nick Chubb and Von Miller. I love that those two being um, grouped together on the same defensive line. They should wreak havoc. Um, Oakland, they have their 
whatever they, they have going on. You know, so I'm not even going to try to even pick Oakland. It's going to be Denver. I'm going with Denver. Philly gets to host Washington. And I think this one's going to be a quick and easy one. Philly's going to win this game. Washington just benched AP. There's a lot of talks about, you know, the veterans and stuff on that team upset about AP being a healthy scratch after coming in and rushing for a thousand yards for him last year when they had nothing. Um, I think that resonates with the team, you, you know, especially when the veterans know AP can play. It's not a matter of he can't play or he's not good enough. It shouldn't be within a 53 man roster and out there, you know, suited up. So yeah. I think that matters. Um, and I think that's going to have a big impact today. So Philly wins handedly. Yeah, I'm with you. Philadelphia. They're too good. They're a lot better. Yep. Cincinnati's going to go to Seattle. I think this is another pretty easy one. Cincinnati, um, Lord help Cincinnati fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, just think a few years ago, they were undefeated. They were the last undefeated team. And then they, they were poised to be the number one seed. And then freaking Andy Dalton broke his arm after he tried to tackle a guy on an interception he threw, which is the most Andy Dalton story that you could probably think of. And they've never been the same. Nope, and then and then AJ Green just you know broke his ankle, which just doesn't help matters. Um, yeah, unfortunately for Cincinnati, that it's going to be a tough road ahead this year. We'll say look out for Jadavion Clowney. First game with Seattle, playing against a pretty crappy offensive line for Cincinnati. He should uh, get after the quarterback, maybe get a sack or two. We'll see. We'll San see. Francisco is going to go to Tampa Bay. I think this is another really interesting game. This is one of the tougher ones. Uh, Bruce Arians is in Tampa Bay. Bruce Arians knows how to call offense. Bruce Arians knows how to coach quarterbacks. He definitely wanted to coach Jameis Winston, or else he wouldn't have chose to go to Tampa Bay uh, right. and come out of retirement. So I think there's something to be said there. Um, how quickly does that happen, though? Uh, that's a whole nother story. And then you got a San Francisco team that, you know, they're not getting a first-year head coach. It's a second-year head coach coming in. Um, able to build on what he's already done there and what he started there. Um, so he should be a little, little bit better position. He's getting some health back at the running back position and quarterback position, which always makes a huge difference. So um, it's a tough game to call. I uh, love Mike Evans. Um, I, I love the defense. They, they you know, they let Alex, Quan Alexander go and replaced him with Devin White. So, you know, it's not like they, there might be a small drop off um, mm -hmm. from a learning curve perspective, but otherwise they're, definitely better long term because they don't have to pay for a Quan Alexander so with that um I'm gonna have to go with I, I'm gonna go with San Francisco yeah um I think that offense is gonna be ready to play I'm not sure if Tampa Bay's defense is good enough yet to be able to stop um Kyle Shanahan when he has his full plethora of weapons at his exposure um a disposal I should say um and yeah I like San Francisco, too. I think um, one thing to be said about them, uh, for me, like their defense has been building up. They've been building their defense up. You saw it happen last year, a transition. They got a little bit better on defense. You accompany that with Mike Shannon or Kyle Shannon's offense. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, he sh should be healthy. They should be a lot better. I just think San Francisco is one of those teams that should, should push for a, a wild card spot this year. So in order to do that, they have to win 10 games. This has got to be a game that they go on the road and win. So, I'm going to pick San Francisco. All right. Now, we got the big the big cheese right here. <laughs> this, it's a tough game again. The Falcons in Minnesota is a tough matchup. Matt Ryan uh, doesn't play well against Mike Zimmer's defense. Uh, Mike Zimmer's always been able to coach a really well defense, hard fought. He likes to man it up, make it tough on his guys. Um, when you have a guy like Xavier Howard who plays the game right, um, you know, even a guy as good as Julio can be challenged by a big, long corner like Xavier Howard so or Xavier Rhodes. So, with that, um, hmm. You know, it's it's been tough, but I'm gonna I'm I'm I gotta go with my Falcons because it is so it is it's just a close game, and my bias is always gonna come out in a close game when it comes to my team. So I'm gonna pick the Falcons in a tight matchup, 27 to 24. Um, but I would not be surprised at all to see it go the other way. I think Kirk Cousins is gonna have a better year this year. I think mm -hmm. he's being slept on as a player because last year they uh, ultimately ended up. Um, going under fir first year OC and a first year quarterback, um, it, it always is a little rough in that first year. I think mm -hmm. when you get a full off season and a lot of tape to look back on and you know be critical of yourself and figure out how to adjust, 
I think teams just come back better the second year. And it, it's, it's always happened. Look at, you know, mm-hmm. Falcons and uh, is another great example of it. So, um, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see the Falcons lose this game. I wouldn't get upset if we started 0-1 with a tough game on the road at Minnesota, as long as, you know, you're really competitive. Right. But, I think Matt Bryant comes back and does what money Matt does, and he kicks a 50-yarder to seal the game, and that's the way we do it. Dude, that's exactly what I was going to say, man. I love it because that's exactly how I feel, dude. We brought in Matt Bryant. I think this game is going to be close. Probably, you know, we're, we're somewhere around the 20 to 20 range where we're super – it's defense, but we're scoring some points because, truthfully, both of our offenses are very talented. Both of our defenses have a lot of talent on it. So, it's just a really good game. And it's just a really good matchup. Um, everyone's going to be tested. Everybody, pass rush, cornerbacks, safeties, linebackers, everybody. And, and truthfully, I just think at the end of the day, I'm with you. Uh, Minnesota cut their kicker, hired a new guy. We cut our kicker, brought back the old guy. And I like that. A guy that's been money, Matt, who's been the Matty Ice for me and, and many other people. And so I think he'll come through in the end, win the game, 23-20, somewhere around there, you know, winning the, with the game, winning field goal. That, I don't think it could get any better than that. So I'm going with that. I don't think it could either, and I think that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to kind of kick, curtail this season and kick off this season, um, which is huge. Um, I think this could be a really big win to start the year. It could really give you some good motivation as a team to come out and play um, and really go after it this year and know that you can compete with the best of the best. Um, but, and, and it's going to, tr- you know, this is a game that's going to challenge the Falcons in a lot of different areas. They're, like I said, they're good at all levels of their defense and all levels of their offense. I mean, they, their offensive line, Mike Tice is going to build from the inside out. He always has. He's going to go after his lines and make sure his lines are taken care of, and he's going to get pushed. He's going to be able to run the ball with Dalvin Cook. He's going to protect Kirk Cousins. And then to your point, you know, you got talent on the outside on both these teams. They both made sure they're going going after their lines and trying to make their lines better and, and, and you know, evolve them all they can. But, you know, this is a game that will really push Atlanta. So mm-hmm. that's that sometimes does come down to the kicker. And us mm-hmm. us going back to a guy that has been solid year in and year out versus a guy that has been, um, you know, shaky and you don't know what's going to come of him because he's brand new. Uh, they just cut Blair Walsh and we got rid of him too because Matt Bryant was just better. Yeah, I'd rather have Matt Bryant, and I think a sleeper uh, player for this game would be Calvin Ridley. You know, everyone for fantasy wise, or so, who should be the X factor? You know, I like our two guys. You know, Muhammad Sanu, but being the second one, but then also uh, Julio Jones versus theirs, Adam Thielen and Stephen Diggs. So for me, it's that third echelon of player right there, and I, I like Calvin Ridley. Might be also Hooper ish. You know, like as far as in that area of. One of them is going to be open today in some spots where we can make some big plays, and it's going to be on Matt Ryan, I think, to deliver the ball on time. That's interesting because I think um, the X factor for the Falcons and the Vikings is the same. It's the running back. I think you're going to be – it's going to be a Dalvin Cook-Freeman matchup. Um, Both guys can hit you in a variety of factors, and when you talk about going against two talented defenses at all levels – Usually guys like running backs and tight ends tend to be difference makers. If you could find a way to get these guys the ball in space and then let them make moves, that could be the difference in a game. Um, And I think that's what both offenses are going to look to do today is try to get those guys in space and see if they can make something. Um, Because I just don't think they're going to give anything up to the digs and the Julios of the world. Um, Mm. They're not going to let the most talented guys beat you. So you have to figure out ways to get other guys into space. So. Yeah. I'm going with those running backs this week. Well, cool. And it's the battle of the FSUs because the yep. FSU running backs. And high school. They went to the same high school. Well, go figure, man. I mean, that, they should just meet up and swap jerseys before after the game. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are our picks. This is the Toss Podcast, changing it up. Look for us in the future. We got some new things coming your way. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, final back. words for you. Bringing it back, man. Let's go. So rise up, boys. Oh, rise up and go Falcons. Hopefully, we can start off one and zero today. We will start off one and one today. <laughs>